Jerry at Fair Oaks. you think these midterm exercises are going to be this afternoon? I don't know. Ted Metcalf told me yesterday that they were always pretty short. Not like the ones at the end of the year. Yeah, at the end of the year, they give out the diplomas and make promotions and stuff like that, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, Major Davis announces promotions of non-coms now, too. I mean, corporals and sergeants. Yeah, I know. Hey, Lee, you'd better get all dressed instead of standing looking out of the window. I'm dressed. Oh, no, you're not. You haven't got your belt on. Oh, uh -huh, I forgot. Lee. Yeah? Don't feel so bad. About leaving Fair Oaks, I mean. Maybe something will happen at the last minute. Maybe when you get down to Mapleton and talk with Mr. Thorpe, it won't be as bad as you think it is now. Oh, it'll be bad, all right. Mr. Thorpe wouldn't have written me the kind of letter he did if it wasn't bad. Oh, you got a letter from him, too, huh? Mm -hmm, yeah, this morning. Uh, uh what did he say, Lee? Uh, do you mind telling me? No, no, of course not. I'll read it to you. I've already put it in my bag. Wait a second. Yeah, here it is. Well, here it is. Uh, let's sit down a minute. We've got time, I guess. Okay. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Mm. My dear Lee, you have by this time, of course, been informed by Major Davis of the unfortunate circumstances surrounding the present financial status of Waterman and Phillips. I'm aware that you will be, very naturally, extremely disappointed at learning of the necessity of your leaving Fair Oaks Military Academy. There's very little more that I can say to you by the written word that I shall explain everything to you when you arrive home. With most sincere regrets, R.A. Thorpe. Hmm. What's the matter, Jerry? Huh? Oh, well, I don't know, Lee. That just didn't sound very much like a letter from an uncle, I guess. <laughs> no. No, you're right, it didn't. And Uncle Ross has never written that kind of a letter to me before. He's never even signed his name, R.A. Thorpe. He's always signed all his letters, love, from Uncle Ross and Aunt Lou. Oh, well, maybe he's so worried about the business and about your having to leave Fair Oaks that he didn't know what to write to you. That's probably the reason he wrote to Major Davis first, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. Well, let's go, huh? Yeah, I'm ready. Hey, yeah, we got to make it snap. That, that's first call. Okay, come on. Say, Jerry, where's Mr. Randall? He said he'd wait for me in the quad and walk over with us to the parade ground. Oh, I see. Oh, there he is, sitting on one of the benches. Uh -huh. Come on, let's run. Okay. Hello, Hello Mr. Randall. Mr. Randall. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, a reception committee in full dress uniform. Huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> you gonna walk over with us to the parade ground, Mr. Randall? Yeah. Hey, there are quite a lot of the parents of the other cadets here today, aren't there? Yes, sir. I'm sorry Mr. and Mrs. Thorpe couldn't have come up today, sir. Uh, so you could have met them. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sorry, too. But maybe Jerry and I will have that pleasure a little later. Hmm? Well, I hope so, sir. Say, Lee. Yes, Jerry. Uh, do you mind running on ahead? I'd like to talk to Mr. Randall on the way over. Oh, of course not. Thanks. Excuse me, sir? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lee. See you right after the exercises. Our train leaves for Melrose City in about 45 minutes. Yes, sir. I'm all ready. Fine. Yeah, the great lad, that roommate of yours, son. Gee, I know it, Mr. Randall. Well, what did you want to see me about, Jerry? Something about Lee? 
Well, I don't know. You don't know? Say, <laughs> hey, what is this about? Well, I hope you won't mind my asking you this, Mr. Randall. Well, I don't know whether I'll mind or not until you ask me, but uh, you go right ahead and I'll tell you. Yes, sir. Well, I was wondering if that telegram you got at the hotel last night, the second one, I mean, uh, from Jim Bennett. Yes? Well, I, I was wondering if that was about Lee, too. Hmm. Oh, what in the world made you think a telegram from Jim Bennett to me would concern Lee Phillips? I, I don't know, sir. I guess it was just because we were all thinking about the one you were sending to Mr. Thorpe uh, to ask him if Lee could come with us to winter quarters. Mm -hmm. And then, well, right after you got the one from Mr. Thorpe, that other one came from Jim Bennett. Well, don't you think it might have been concerning some business of my own, Jerry, in connection with the circus? Yes, sir, it could have been. But, well... You, you remember you said that second telegram was one you couldn't tell us about. That's right. Well, gee, I don't know, Mr. Randall. I guess I just had a hunch. I guess it was a bad hunch, though. No, Jerry, it wasn't a bad hunch. Your guess was a good one. Golly, was it? Yeah. That wire from Jim did concern Lee. Gee, this is certainly getting you mixed up in no, Lee's business. No, don't you worry about that part of it, son. I'm tickled to death to be able to do anything I can to help Lee out of this dilemma. Now... I'm going to tell you just a little of what I found out, but I'm I'm also going to pledge you to absolute secrecy before I tell you. Yes, sir. I won't tell a soul. And you mustn't even let on to Lee that I've told you anything at all. No, sir, I won't. I'm going to tell you this for two reasons. First, because during all the months you were with me in the circus, you proved that you could hold a trust. And second, because I want you to know about it, so you can help me solve a rather tough situation later on. Yes, sir. Jerry... Major Davis and I had a talk yesterday afternoon. Yes, sir, I know. It was he who told me that Lee's father was Carter Phillips of Waterman and Phillips. As I told you boys at dinner last night, I've done business with that firm for more than 15 years. Yes, sir. Jerry, when a, when a circus like Randall Brothers buys a big printing order from a firm like Waterman and Phillips, we have to be sure that that printing firm is in good, uh, good enough condition to fill that order that the printers are sound enough financially to be able to buy all the paper and ink and other material to go ahead with the order. You understand that? Yes, sir. It's Jim Bennett's job to be sure that all the people we do business with can deliver and deliver on time. Now, son, at the same time I wired Mr. Thorpe for his permission for Lee to visit you, I also wired to Jim and uh, asked him for a report on the financial condition of Waterman and Phillips as of yesterday. Oh, gee, I... I think I'm You begin... think you know what I'm going to say, hmm? Are you... I mean, you found out from Jim Bennett that there's nothing wrong with Lee's dad's printing business. That's exactly what I mean. Gee. Waterman and Phillips are in as good a financial condition as they ever were. And as far as I can tell right now, there should be no reason for Lee having to leave Fair Oaks. Oh, golly, that's well... That's wonderful, Mr. Randall. Yeah, yes, it is so far, son, but... We're going to have to be very, very careful in the way we handle this. Oh, yes, sir. I, I can see that. It's a dangerous situation, meddling into the business affairs of someone else. But it just seems to me that uh, there is a possibility that this Mr. Thorpe isn't... Well, that he isn't uh, quite square with Lee. And uh, Major Davis and I are going to find out all about it. Gee, I sure hope you do. In the meantime, Jerry, don't you worry. I'm absolutely certain that Jerry Dugan and Lee Phillips are still going to be roommates at Fair Oaks Military Academy. Oh, Mr. Randley, it's sure swell of you to do all this for Lee, and I... Oh, golly, th that's assembly call. I I I've got to run, Mr. Randall. Okay, go right ahead, Jerry. I'll see you later. Where the heck have you been? Never mind, I'm here now. Regiment, attention. Regiment, it's Passing review. Passing review. Passing review. Passing review. What's right? What's right? What's right? What's Regiment, halt! Regiment, halt! Parade, press! Cadets of Fair Oaks 
military academy, once more we have come to the time when some of you are about to receive recognition for your efforts, your ability, and your fine spirit by promotions in the ranks of non-commissioned officers. Your faculty and your cadet officers have made the following appointments. To the rank of sergeants, cadets Milford, Sparkman, and Wright. To the rank of corporal, cadets Jackson, Harling, Nichols, Phillips, and Dugan. Whoopee. Jerry, pipe down. To those of you who are to wear sergeants and corporal chevrons for the first time next term, congratulations. And may you continue to advance within the ranks of this cadet corps. To those of you who have not yet received appointments, remember that motto of ours up above the main entrance of our academy, through Custis Hall. Toil is the father of fame. May it be your reward to receive just recognition next time. Most of you will be returning here next term. Of course, as always, we shall welcome you. Some of you will not return. To you, our sincerest wishes for success on life's journey, and God bless you. Let us now sing our alma mater hymn as we part for a short time. Regiment, attention! All right, Cadet Captain Raymond. Hail to be blue and gold. Corporal Dugan, we've got to catch a train. Right with you, Corporal Phillips. Obey!